God bless you, global Christian friend. We take advantage of these moments and times and thank God for them and you. With your King James Bible, 1231, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. All right. Cast out of heaven, cast out of the world. That all tell you something, shouldn't it? Cast out of heaven and cast out of the world. That means he is not fit for heaven. He's not fit for the world. And if he's not fit for heaven and he's not fit for the world, why should he be fit for you? All right? That's why Jesus said that uh, in this world, you got to hate your life in this world because he is the prince of this world, the prince of this world. He not, he's the prince of the power of the air. He's not the prince of life, but the prince of this world. Verse 32, I love and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, he's going to become magnetronic. I will draw all men unto me. Lift him up from the earth, he becomes magnetronic. You're magnetronic in the first place anyhow. How can you have all these forces we said before, this earth is a giant magnet, solid, partially more, and also is the sun, bigger magnetic function. But if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. I got news for you. You don't hear that statement, but guess what it says? All must appear before the judgment seat of God. So therefore, you have to see this thing in the first place anyhow. He is to be lifted up from the earth. That's what we're doing here now. We're lifting him up from this planet earth. And he's going to draw. Because all men must appear before the judgment seat of God. To give the account of things done in their bodies. So... Our duty is to lift him up to see that come to pass. Now, verse 33, this said, he signifying what death he should die. The people answered him, we have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever. And it does. And how said that the son of man must be lifted up? Who is this son of man? I did it, uh, I guess, CD or something on the order of that, of the Son of Man. You want it, you can uh, get it. But let me tell you, first of all, if you don't uh, have the proper mind and proper knowledge, you won't understand it. If you don't have the proper mind, the proper knowledge, the proper spirit, you won't understand it. How do we know? Uh, there have been well-educated people that have taken it and say, I don't understand it. Well, get your mind right with the Father. Get your mind right with God. Get your spirit right. Become tuned. Become aligned. You'll understand it. We've heard out of the law that Christ abideth ever. I'll say thou the Son of Man must be lifted up. Who is this Son of Man? Verse 35. Then she said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. Can I go with that one? When you walk in darkness, you don't know where you're going. Can't know where you're going. There's no direction. There's no luminosity. Verse 36, one of my favorites. While ye have light, believe in the light that ye may be the children of light, that ye may be the children of light. Think about that statement. 
Now, there are some children that are just absolutely born to be light. Light as an inheritance. But here he said, you may be that you're being permitted to be the children of light. Don't miss out on such an opportunity. I'll explain in greater detail why it's important to want to be the light. In this respect, and you can get a good understanding from that by reading Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. Good, clear understanding about the importance of being the children of light. Now, these things spake Jesus and departed. There we go again. And did hide himself from them. There we go again. How do you think he hid himself? How do... <laughs> We want you to understand the Lord uh, the way he gave us to understand. He, he hid himself. That was the best that they could offer about him hiding himself. Uh, the more educated say so he vanished. We understand that because that's found in 24th chapter of Luke. We read that before. Verse 37. But though he had done so many miracles before them, Yet they believe not on him. Think about that statement. They can't perform no end of the miracle that he performed. <clears throat> they couldn't walk on water. They couldn't raise the dead. They couldn't vanish. They couldn't reappear. They couldn't convey. They couldn't speak to Lazarus and cause him to levitate. From 42 steps below. And so much more that John said, if they should be written, the world can't contain the books that ought to be written. So understand who you believe in. Understand who you know. Don't just go to church and sit up in church and clap when the pastor make a smart remark or what appear to be a wise remark and it had nothing to do with your salvation. Nothing at all. You don't know him, but you need to know him. You know, they believe not on him. That verse 38, uh, uh, 37 after seeing him do so many miracles, they still didn't believe. Well, the Bible tells you that all unbelief is sin. All right? So they're sinning before the face of the Savior. You don't have a choice. You're sinning before the face of him who can redeem you. You don't have a choice. that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled in verse 38, which he spoke, Lord, who have believed our report? 53rd, we do. And to whom is the arm of the Lord has been revealed to us? God bless you, global Christian friends. Until next time, uh, 